Hello everybody, my name is Sebastian Branton, and today we're going to be talking about non-fullerene acceptor molecules in organic solar cells. Before we get into the non-fullerene acceptor molecules, let's talk a little bit about organic solar cells. So organic solar cells are organic because the conductive opponents of the electronics used are hydrocarbon based. Uh, the solar cell aspect actually converts sunlight into usable kinetic energy through charge transport. It's important to study and refine these organic solar cells because organic solar cells operate at a fraction of the cost of inorganic solar cells uh, and also have an easier ability to be implemented in cities, which we will discuss further soon, but also because our increasing energy demand that's just going to happen exponentially over time needs a solution to this. And currently, utilizing fossil fuels as energy is something that we are going to see lowering in quantity over time. This is directly compared to the availability of sunlight, which can always convert into energy and is seen much more reproducible. So here we have a dense city. We have variation in architecture, and as such, something like an organic solar cell would be realistic to apply throughout all buildings here because you could actually cater each building's specificity to a specific shape of the organic solar cell and you could actually create that shape on the organic solar cell and place it on a building with much less difficulty than if you were trying to do this with something like a silicon based inorganic solar cell. This is because these are flexible and you can kind of cut and paste them as if you will and put them where you'd like. Here we have a general schematic of an organic solar cell. More specifically, this is a bulk heterojunction solar cell. And you can see here that it has this acceptor donor layer that's blended together. This blended layer mixes the acceptor and donor and is sandwiched by an anode and cathode and then is placed on a substrate. So engineering on a molecular level here can alter the band gap, which is something that you can see as a primary factor in ability to match to donor molecules, when you're speaking about acceptor molecules. And also this is a widely studied form of solar cell when it comes to these non fullerene acceptors, that being bulk heterojunction. So how does this setup actually convert light into usable energy? Well, first we have the absorption of a photon. That photon then forms an exciton, which is an electron bound to a hole, and then diffuses and splits, and is transported and collected. The donor and acceptor interface is the recipient of that electron diffusion. So it's important to understand the molecular interactions occurring between these compounds, as well as the varying degree in response to additions and removal of certain and group substituents. And we will see a specific case of that soon. But first, I would just like to establish the difference between fullerene and non-fullerene acceptors, along with some of the uh, motivating factors behind pursuing refinement in non-fullerene acceptors. So first of all, fullerene acceptors are allotropes of carbon, which are essentially different physical forms of carbon. So for example, carbon has um, diamond, and graphite, those are considered allotropes. So fullerene is just uh, another allotrope of carbon. Um, and fullerene acceptors have an invariation in energy level. This plays a critical role in the fact that you cannot tune these molecules to the extent that you can tune non-fullerene acceptors. And like I said earlier, we will see this soon, but it's important to understand that because this is a motivating factor in measuring power conversion efficiency and other forms of uh, varying levels of success in a schematic. But overall, we have increased solubility in these non fullerene acceptor molecules, which allows for an easier synthesis, um, better morphology because of the uh, active layer, um, higher absorption, um, and as such, we have a higher pool of available donor acceptor matching, which is another thing we'll get into a little bit more later. So the first 
that we're going to talk about is ITICTH as an acceptor molecule. So this experiment done by Mader et al. concluded that the addition and removal of certain substituents on the N group actually showed a increase or decrease in power conversion efficiency of that acceptor molecule. What's interesting is that the fluorinated N group had a 12.1% power conversion efficiency versus the unsubstituted at 8.88 or the dye substituted at 9.06 or the methoxy substituted um, which was the second highest at 10.7. Now these ITICTH acceptors utilize thionyl as a side chain and when compared to acceptor molecules without the thionyl side chain showed that these had higher stability as well as a uh, better ability to match certain donor molecules. So this setup, and you can see the nomenclature here to the left, this is considered to be a great example of single junction um, applicable non-fullerene acceptor molecules, and also showed uh, a fused ring electron acceptor um, as being highly efficient for its um, class. Now, the ethionyl side chain is important because it uh, showcased the sigma inductive effect and uh, matched two different uh, band gap donors at narrow and wide. Now, this is, this is pretty interesting because it matched two different energy levels. So this is when it comes to matching donor molecules, you have this increased pool of available matches between acceptors and donors with these non-fullerenes versus fullerenes. So if you have a donor molecule you're interested in uh, utilizing, you can realistically tune a non-fullerene acceptor molecule to match that donor. So the next two we're going to talk about are derived from rylene diamides. So you can see here we have naphthalene, perylene, we have the naphthalene diamide derivatives, perylene diamide derivatives, derivatives, excuse me, and we also have uh, quite many more additions such as terylene, quatrilene, etc. So first the one we're going to talk about is naphthalene. Now, these naphthalene diamide difluorobenzene molecules, excuse me, showed uh, some promising signs. Um, it had a viable charge transport, a uh, pi to pi stacking effect shown from X ray diffraction studies that showed it as a viable non fullerene acceptor molecule that could be implemented into all polymer cells. Um, and in doing so could improve the current active layer composition of APSCs. Um, most importantly, when coupled with the appropriate donor, which is in this case, PTB7TH. And finally had an acceptable uh, JSC uh, short circuit charge density value, which was deemed viable. The perylene diamide derivative FTTB PD14 is seen here along with the synthetic route. So this non-fullerene acceptor molecule was shown to have the lowest voltage loss of any perylene diamide derivative along with the highest power conversion efficiency at 10.6% in bulk heterojunction cells. Now, this also showcased the significance of ring fusion in these acceptor molecules, um, and more so the favorable energy levels you receive from ring fusion. So we've talked a little bit about these conclusions to benefits of specific acceptor molecules that are non-fluorine based. Um, we talked about the uh, ease and synthesis of some of these, um, the appealing pi to pi stacking effects, the higher response to modification to side chains uh, slash n groups, um, and a higher degree of matching to a donor pool, which all are very important benefits. But what are a couple of challenges or what, what are some challenges uh, that are faced by these NFA molecules? Now, one, one consistent challenge that was noted by multiple researchers through uh, these studies was that there needs to be more or rather a better understanding of the morphological uh, 
aspects of the donor acceptor layer blends. So we need to understand what's going on chemically a little bit more with these interactions. Um, and in doing so will allow us to improve um, these blends. Um, and hopefully over time, increase electron mobility from these non forward acceptor molecules. Because it was noted that while you have these benefits and alternatives that suggest using these over fullerene base, we have this um, noticeable uh, decrease in electron mobility. So with that, um, feel free to ask me questions. Um, send me an email, sbrand at pdx.edu, or leave a comment if you'd like. Make sure to give this video a thumbs up and subscribe if you like this. Um, in the future, I plan on uploading more videos on this channel, um, not necessarily related to some of these um, organic solar cell materials, but um, talking a little bit about some biology, things such as Antarctic findings in the Southern Ocean, um, research uh, regarding certain species found and conservation of those species. But we, we will get into that another time. But thank you again.